Good afternoon. Turn it on. Okay. There we are. Good afternoon. I got it unbalanced now. Jan might have liked that. Yes. <laughs> I'm Pastor Greg Corinne, I'm pastor at uh, Redeemer Lutheran Church in Fircrest, uh, not far from here. Um, that is uh, the church where Randy and Jan are members, as, as well as uh, Bishop Hoff said, who will be uh, bringing our message to us uh, this afternoon. Um, I've known Randy since I moved out into the area. I think it was uh, it'll be 24 years ago now. Uh, we were in a tech study together, and that's how I first got to know him. Later on, Jan, uh, and you've known Randy for, for longer that, than that. You've known both of them, and I believe Jan was your secretary in the Senate. So, um, so this one, this one hits home and hits hard. Uh, Jan was a dear friend. She was our council president. Uh, at the time of her uh, of her death, and so our our congregation, of course, appreciates all of those prayers as we look into those transitions, and the family appreciates your prayers. Um, so, on behalf of them, thank you for coming. I, uh, Randy and family, just I mean, look around. I mean, this happened. We put the word out days ago, days ago. And yet, all of you were able to be here, and yet you are just such a small fraction of the lives of people that have been touched and influenced by Jan, uh, by them as a couple. And uh, it's amazing what the Holy Spirit can do. You represent years of ministry. So thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing your heart and your love for them. Um, Please join us afterwards. There is some cookies and there are some cookies and refreshments. Hopefully the governor isn't is allowing us to do that. I don't know. We might be jumping the gun by two or three days. <laughs> I think that this is good and it is so good to uh, to be able to gather now, isn't it? Yeah. At times like this. So we thank God for that moment. As far as masks go. Um, at least in our congregation, we've just simply been following the CDC and the governors who, who are saying now that we are out of doors and if you have been fully vaccinated and you would like to take off your mask, you can do so. But again, please be, please be sensitive to those who are wearing masks. Be sensitive to those who are, um, because we come from all different backgrounds. Amen? Amen. Be aware of that. And uh, don't be shaking too many hands and, and getting too close. We are planning to um, have communion during the service, so hopefully you have all received a little communion cup. If you haven't, Diana is right here. She has those. Um, just so you don't end up with uh, uh, wine all over your front, I will just mention to you that there, to get to the bread, you have to peel the little cellophane part off first. And then to get to the wine, you peel the whole towel off. It's juice. <laughs> um, I, people have been asking about how they can uh, remember Jan and on the back of the bulletin there's a mention there that if you'd like to give a gift in honor of Jan uh, most recently in the last few years she helped create a food pack program that we distribute from Redeemer Lutheran Church and uh, you can get to that make a check to Redeemer Lutheran and then carefully designated for the Hope for the Future food tax. There, that is on the back of the bulletin. Also, you saw that there is a, uh, there's a basket to collect uh, cans and, and uh, non-perishables for the food bank. Well, do that. Uh, whether you've done it today or in the days to come, do that in honor of Jan, and I know that she will appreciate it. Amen. Amen. So, I know that um, many of you, a lot of you might know each other, but a lot of you have never met before, right? And yet we're drawn together into this space by God's Spirit and by the Spirit that God showed through Jan. And so we know that this is a holy place. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray together the opening prayer. Lord, open our eyes to your glory. Open our ears to your story. Open our hearts to 
to your fire, open our wills to your desire. Waken us, O Lord, to your risen power, to love, to your coming from above. Bring us, Lord, to your peace here today, to your meeting on the way, to your speaking in a friend, to our guiding to the end. Amen. Amen. Join us in all things right and beautiful. family to say for us the 23rd Psalm. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the house of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff thy comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. of the world, listen to the word of the Lord, announce it from coast to coast, 
Jesus, his own departure, Jesus said these words. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And I will take you to myself, that where I am going, you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. God's beloved people, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I think the sermon's over. <laughs> I'll work on that. <laughs> I'm uh, concerned about all of you who are having to stand up in the back. Um, there's some places on the bench over here uh, if all of you are getting tired. Um, two comments, Randy and family, before I actually talk about Jan and about the scripture lessons for today. Um, the first is a thank you to you for the invitation to say a word today. Uh, as Pastor Greg Corinne said, um, during my 12 years as Bishop of the Synod, of Jan Olson was the secretary of the Southwestern Washington Synod for one term. Uh, a more gracious and reliable person, uh, not to mention a person who's fun to be with, uh, was never had. And uh, I give you know, thanks. We had a very warm and cordial work, working relationship, and I want to thank you because this is a chance for me to give thanks for Janet for what she has given to all of us. Um, the second one is a little more serious note is that um, for anyone who thinks that life is fair, uh, I wish that two things would happen today or would have happened. One is that they would have met Jan Olson personally and known what a shock it is to get a telephone call saying that she had died with no warning. Um, I don't know of any um, situation that proves that more wrong, that life is fair, than an event like this. And um, we all wonder why in the world things like this happen, and uh, yet we continue to run the line of God's grace in the midst of this. So uh, I give thanks for a chance to say something, and I also am so sad about what's happened today. Uh, as uh, Pastor Crim said, both uh, Jan and Randy and Ashley and my wife Linda and I are part of Redeemer Luther Church. Uh, Greg Corinne is our good and faithful pastor, Meta, as well. And um, you know, this pandemic has been hard on all of us in different ways, but I know personally, even being retired, I know what a strain this has been on pastors this year. Uh, how many pastors do we have here today? Would you raise your hand? I'd just like to raise them high. We have quite a few pastors here. And uh, not so much for those of us who are retired, but for those of us, for those pastors that continue to be shepherds of the flock, uh, this has been an awful year. And um, someone said to me, even being retired, how's this year been for you? I said, well, it's one of the best 10 years of my life. <laughs> Um, so I hear, Greg, that the church council wants to give you a little vacation as a reward. They're sending you and Meta to an uh, all-expense-paid trip to Forks. 
Now you've heard two scripture lessons read already. The 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. In John chapter 14, where Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. Uh, those two scripture texts are about as self-explanatory as anything else in the scriptures. So I've decided I'm going to read yet another one for you and speak about it for a moment. And that is uh, from a chapter earlier in John's Gospel, the sixth chapter. Let me read you these words. Jesus said to them, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also want to go away? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom should we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Lord, who, to whom shall we go? Jesus was nothing if not dependable, meaning that his disciples depended on him literally for their very life. You have the words of eternal life, said Peter. We often take the word um, dependable when we say of someone they're a dependable person as sort of a uh, whole hum, like, well, they're okay, they're dependable. And what we don't realize is that dependable is two sides of the coin. It's all the person that we depend on and also those of us who are dependent on the dependable person. Think of the people in the scriptures who have been dependable even though they haven't received this particular word. Think of Sarah and Abraham being faithful and hopeful when God promised them more descendants and stars, the stars in the sky. Think of Moses when the people of Israel uh, heard that they would be released from captivity and led to freedom. Moses was dependable. Think of Peter, James, and John, the three disciples who, except for that instance that happened in the Garden of Gethsemane, were dependable for all of the disciples. They looked to them for guidance. And think of ooh, Paul and Barnabas, dependably, reliably preaching the gospel all around the Mediterranean. Mm. I've chosen this uh, scripture passage because Jan Olson is nothing if not a dependable, reliable, consistent, persistent person. Now, if I had said that at right the beginning, if I had said to you, I want you to remember one word about Jan that says she's dependable, that sounds pretty whole hum. But the truth of the matter is, is that Jan Olson was dependable because we depended on her. We depended on her to be our rock. The person who gave us hope. The person who was gracious. The person who was willing to go out of her way to do and say things to us when we needed them. I think that to call generals dependable, perhaps, is to say more about us than it is to say about her. And so what happens in life when we lose the person that we depend on? Think of yourself. We, we all have them, don't we? For some, it might be grandparents or parents, maybe even children, friends, pastors, congregation members. What happens when a person you depend on for the very essence of life is gone? What do we do? There's nothing we can do to change it. But we can remember the person who was dependable because they gave us so many gifts 
And isn't that what Jan Olson gave to us? To all of you, the family, to all of us who were members of her congregation, to all of the people she served in the Southwestern Washington Senate. I think what Jan Olson has given to each one of us is, dare I say it, maybe even a little uh, hypocrisy here. Jan Olson has given us a glimpse of Jesus, a glimpse of the divine, a glimpse of what it is to be in the presence of God. Is that heresy? No. Jan Olson has given us a glimpse of being in the presence of God because she was so dependable. She was so gracious. She was the person who reached out to all of us each and every day, that we became dependent on her. And now we miss her terribly. So I want to thank you today, family, for sharing Jan with us. I want to thank you that you were gracious yourselves and allowed her and permitted her and encouraged her to do the things that all of us know that she did. Think of where you've asked that money goes for and it goes in her honor. Food packs. Just think of that. I give thanks for her time as the Secretary of the Senate. When I would call her up and say, Jan, I know this is last minute, but I need to ask you to do something for me. Would you do that? And over the phone she'd say, well, if God wants me to. <laughs> How do you answer that? <laughs> and she would do it. I'm hope, hoping today that there are times, uh, time to tell some stories about Jan you know, from the family, from all of you. And I would encourage you to tell to the family the stories of why she was dependable to you. Why was she one of those people that you depended upon for perhaps even life itself? And so many people said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Well, you have the words of eternal life. And you are the Holy One of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
his honored child or spouse, though life be wrenched away. God's word and from your from yourself, um, bring a blessing to us all. The family did want to share a few words with you, so I will hand that over to the sergeant leader. Thank you, Father. start with saying thank you for everyone for being here. Um, probably the hardest day ever, <laughs> but we thank you. Um, I guess I always remember mom as always being so giving, and if there was someone who was hungry, she would invite them. Um, she would ask them into a restaurant and say, what would you like, and have anything. <laughs> A lot of people said, you know, I'm not hungry because that's not what they were looking for, but she was she would always buy food or just help anyone, anyone who asked. I think that's her biggest thing. So, Dad, do you want to say something? Yeah, because they promised my family I wasn't I wasn't gonna be a mess. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm doing sure I'm a mess. Again, thank you to all of you who are sharing the lesson you can. You are listening to us and have been to our family all these years. Appreciate it so much. that it's true for me. You know what they say about being married to your best friend? You, you're married to, you know, be married to someone who knows all about you and still likes you. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, our family is uh, a little crazy and mixed up. <laughs> In all the best ways. <laughs> and that's partly Jan's doing. She wouldn't have had it any other way. You know what we've got? And that's so glad that they can all be here. B. Granddaughter, the 
just now. Who <laughs> <laughs> well, I know she has a name. <laughs> she also has extraordinary pink hair. <laughs> but that's what makes her who she is. Sorry. Hello, oh, I'm so glad that you could all be here to make this today, then, Kevs. Cody is over here. And I have to, I have to told him that he married me a zonker in uh, Dunsbury. <laughs> and uh, he's not quite ready for that designation. <laughs> but uh, I think it works. <laughs> so a four or five for zonker. <laughs> and all the other strange and wondrous people who make up our family. Oh, Miss China over here. <laughs> right the, the, the runner in our family. She's not running away, she's running for good things in her life. Right, we're glad you're here. She lives in Louisiana. So we're all glad that that whole family could be here today. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you feel like crying, go right ahead. <laughs> Because I'm going to do it with you. It's an okay thing. So, we're going to miss you all. Thank you for being here. Amen. Uh, thanks to everybody for being here. I just want to say, uh, yeah, my mom made me who I am. And I'm couldn't be even happier to be who I am and I have had in my life. I'm sure you all know the same. Hello. Um, I get the emotions from my dad, so if I can do this, it'd be great. Um, I'm one of the Indian Ash leader, you know, we, we came a little late to the party, but we're here. And, um, and, uh, Andy and I didn't have a choice. <laughs> but they, Dave and Ash, they had a choice and they chose us. And we couldn't be happier. And I know Mom, that was one of the proudest things she was of Dave choosing to stay with our family. And, be, and, and just be with us. Yep. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I can always come when you talk about dependability and my mom being dependable. Yep. yep. <laughs> I can always count on calling home. And Broken heart or whatever, Andy can attest to this one. <laughs> Just not so much. But, um, call home with a broken heart and come on, take it. Okay. It's all okay. Mm -hmm.
Let us pray. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion of saints, in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Give courage and faith to all who mourn, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. Grant us grace to entrust Jan to your never-failing love, which sustained her in this life, receive her into the arms of your mercy, and remember her according to the favor you bear for all your people. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Amen. And now we commend our dear Jan to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Jan. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming, receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. And the people all say, Amen. Amen. of Christ throughout the ages, and that in fact we join in this feast together today with Jan, with Christ himself, the disciples. And this is the one of the ways that we show our unity is through this feast, with the whole church. So I'll ask you to, when I you, you, uh, say the words of institution, I lift up the bread and the wine that you lift up that cup as a sign of, of our all our unity, that we are doing this as one body, and then we will take, together we will take the bread, and together we will drink the wine. We remember how on the night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, it eats. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new communion, the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink this. And as often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. And so remember these words of command to eat and to drink. And the promise that this meal carries. We are bold to pray as Jesus taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Together we take the bread. Remember that this is the body of Christ which has been broken for us. We drink the wine, remembering that this is the blood of Christ which is shed for us. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ always strengthen us and preserve us in Christ's name now and forever. 
Again, thank you on behalf of the family, and, and thank you, family, for allowing me to be a part of the service as well. Um, after we're done here, there is a reception of, of coffee, cookies, and water. Please just remember to uh, keep some distance um, and uh, or be wise to that at least as we as we go to that. We are we are nearing the end of the COVID season. Hallelujah! But yes. but still just nearing it, nearing it. Um, but thank you, and continue to share the stories, and uh, continue to write the cards, because as some of us know, in the days and weeks to come, things can get suddenly very quiet and silent. And so it's really important to remember those phone calls, um, those, those cards, and uh, the assurance that you can offer them. Will you promise to do that, folks? Absolutely. Thank you. Let us join in singing boldly, Thine is the glory. Right now. <laughs> 